Joining me now is a man not known for sitting on the fence. He passionately opposed the invasion of Iraq, and now he feels that Hezbollah is justified in attacking Israel. The Respect MP for Bethnal Green is in our central London studio. A very good evening, a good morning rather to you, Mr. Galloway. Uh, how do you justify your support for Hezbollah and its leader, Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah? A preposterous way to introduce an item, and what a preposterous first question. 24 years ago, on the day my daughter was born, and I've just celebrated her 24th birthday, I had to dash to the maternity hospital to see her given birth from a mass demonstration in London against the Israeli invasion and occupation of Lebanon. Israel has been invading and occupying Lebanon all of my 24-year-old daughter's life. The Hezbollah are a part of the Lebanese national resistance who are trying to drive having successfully driven most Israelis from their land in 2000, Israel from the rest of their land, and to get back those thousands of Lebanese prisoners who were kidnapped by Israel under the terms of their illegal occupation of Lebanon. It's Israel that's invading Lebanon. It's Israel that's attacking Lebanon, not Lebanon that's attacking Israel. You've just been carrying a report of 10 Israeli soldiers on the border getting ready to invade Lebanon and you ask us to mourn that operation as if it were some kind of war crime. Israel is invading Lebanon and has killed 30 times more you, you Lebanese put your civilians on the button, though, didn't you? than have died in Israel. So it's you who should be justifying the evident bias which is written on every line on your face and is in every nuance of your voice and is loaded in every question that you ask. Right. The, uh, you put your finger on the button, though, didn't you, when you said that Hezbollah was set up back in the 1980s in order to remove every Israeli soldier from Lebanese soil. As you said, it achieved that in 2000. No, it didn't. This is a setback. No, it didn't. It, it didn't. This is a key point that you're, you're concealing from your viewers. Israel was forced out of most of the south of Lebanon in 2000. It still occupies a part of Lebanon since 2000. The Shebab Farms thousands area, which is subject to this Lebanese, latest UN draft resolution. Thousands of Lebanese prisoners have been kidnapped by Israel. Hezbollah I spoke and the just a moment Lebanese ago to the Israeli to Foreign Ministry released. spokesman who said that the three Lebanese who uh, have been uh, captured, perhaps no, you'd no. like to use that word, have been Anna, before a not judge those. These are and not been the prisoners. through a court of law. Oh, please, have a slightly longer memory than four weeks. I'm talking about the thousands of prisoners taken during the 18 years of Israeli occupation, illegal occupation of South Lebanon. These are the prisoners that have to be released in exchange for the Israeli soldiers that were captured at the beginning of this wave of the crisis. Can I ask you about a report that's in uh, today's Sunday Telegraph, which showed that Iran has given Hezbollah long-range uh, missiles capable of targeting any part of Israel. Uh, Iran, according to this uh, Iranian MP who helped found Hezbollah, uh, has also said that he's, Iran has given the organization, organization author, authorization rather, to target Tel Aviv. Can you blame Israel for wanting to destroy those missiles? But this is preposterous. America has given Israel uh, missiles that can target not just every city in Lebanon, but every city in the Arab and Muslim world, including Iran. Why should America be allowed to give long-range missiles to Israel, including hundreds of nuclear missiles? But Iran because it's is not given it to, to a terrorist missiles. organization. But, but they're not a terrorist organization. Only in the mind of Rupert Murdoch's sky and the Times and the oh, Sun and on. the news of the world. I'm going to stop not you a there, Mr. Galloway. Prescribed terrorist organizations. Terrorist One man's terrorist state. is yes, another precisely. man's freedom fighter. We know that perfectly well. Precisely. In most people's eyes, they are deemed to be. No, they're uh, not. They, they had a choice, didn't they? they? Let's let's not. let's understand this. They no. had a choice, like the IRA. No, no, no. To they're nothing take to do with politics. the IRA. Listen, Anna. I'm in, saying they had a you, choice you're right, you're to right. absorb one, the idea of politics. They've got two to Hezbollah cabinet ministers. Anna, you one man's on. terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. You are totally wrong in saying that in most people's eyes, Hezbollah are terrorists. In most people's eyes, Israel is a terrorist state. It's the fact that you cannot comprehend that fact that leads to the bias which runs through all of your reporting and every question that you've asked me in this interview. Mm -hmm. Can, 
Can I ask you one question? I, I was relating to the IRA and Sinn Féin. They have decided to embrace politics. Hezbollah had the chance to embrace politics. They've already got two cabinet ministers. They're well respected They're in the south. In politics. They are That's what I'm the saying. Of the if you listen to me, I'm saying they've got two cabinet ministers already. They had a chance to do that. Why did they need to capture and kill Look, Israeli soldiers on the border? Surely that set, sets back their ambitions to be a political force inside a democratic well, look, Lebanon. Look, because Israel occupies their country and holds thousands of their compatriots as kidnap hostages in their dungeons. It's really very simple, except if you think only in a clock that goes back four weeks. If you know, and you're old enough to know better, that this origins of this conflict are not four weeks or four years or 14 years, but are decades old. You want people to think that the crisis started when the clock started ticking on Sky News. No, I don't. I don't the at people all. In I want to ask you one. Yeah, I want to ask you one final question. Do you think that the, the four weeks that we've seen, as you mentioned, the 26 days of this crisis, has set back Hezbollah's ambition, ambitions? Not, not only are Hezbollah Israeli soldiers now over You've the border. Let me finish. Let me finish. Would you mind let me finish, please? Not only are Israeli soldiers over the border in sizable numbers, but also their claims to be a good political organization to help a, a democratic Lebanese government with the Syrians who've also now left an independent state. That has also come to blows as well. What a silly question. What a silly person you are. Hezbollah is winning the war. You can see it on the other half of the screen. Hezbollah is more popular today. That was not today. my question. Hezbollah is more popular today in Lebanon amongst Christians, amongst Sunnis, amongst Shiites, amongst all Arabs, amongst all Muslims, than it has ever been. It's Israel who's lost the war, and Bush and Blair for politically organizing the war, who've lost politically. This is a defeat okay. for Bush and Blair Let and Israel. Everybody right. but you can see it. Let me separate out that question then. Is it a setback, given that Hezbollah was set up in order to get Israeli soldiers off Lebanese soil, that there are now more Israeli soldiers on Lebanese soil than there were 26 days ago? Uh, uh, well, they seem to be getting a bloody good hiding on the other half of the screen that I'm watching. Maybe you can't see it, but I'm watching them getting a bloody good hiding in the war. So if that's a success, I'm not sure what a failure would look like. The reality is that this conflict will go on. The United Nations resolution solves nothing, gives Lebanon nothing, gives the prisoners in Israeli dungeons nothing, and as Anne Kluid, my erstwhile colleague, was just saying, Israel has just kidnapped even more Palestinian politicians, cabinet ministers, members of parliament, and thousands of others held in Israeli dungeons, and this war will continue until the overall settlement is reached. That settlement must mean Israeli withdrawal from all occupied territory, that it currently holds since the war in 1967, the release of all political prisoners and a stake for the Palestinians with East Jerusalem as its capital. No justice, no peace. You're not going out of business as a newscaster in Jerusalem anytime soon, believe me. Well, as usual, you have prompted a huge email response, both for and against you, Mr. Galloway, so we'll leave it there. I have to say that some people might find it offensive when uh, more families are mourning their dead to, you, to hear you say that it was a, a bloody you good give hiding. A damn. So you don't give a damn. You don't even know about the Palestinian families. You don't even know that they exist. Tell me the name of one member of the seven members of the same family slaughtered on the beach in Gaza by an Israeli warship. You don't even know their name, but you know the name of every Israeli soldier who has been taken prisoner in this conflict. Because you believe, whether you know it or not, that Israeli blood is more valuable than the blood of Lebanese or Palestinians. That's the truth, and the discerning of your viewers already know it.